Such a fun. We got to talk about this. You got to stop scaring the kinder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guy, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, second verse, better than the first, I think. Uh, okay, um, just, just to be really, really quite sure, is there a possibility to check how available we are on Facebook and, and YouTube right now? I don't want to have um, the same mistake as we had a week ago with this technical stuff from Belive. Yep, yep. Um, those of you, if you're watching this, you just get a little bit of behind the scenes action here. Um, Sasha and I are juggling a technology. This is our second time through. Um, and we're just going to do a double check. You guys could help us, by the way, by just letting, letting us know if you can see and hear us. Put a chat in the system. Do you see? Do you hear us? Is it working? Okay. And Sasha, if you go out to the uh, Vogelich Studio Facebook group and go to the top of the page, you, you'll be able to see a video there. Yep, I, I, I see myself sitting here. I see myself talking here. I think that's not so bad. Yep, yep, I see it. We've got split screen. You're on the show now. That's that's an improvement. And on the show? Yeah, you're on the show. And um, and and I can hear us. I think and we're, I think, Sasha, we're, yeah, we're, right. yeah, we're good. We're good. All okay, right. great. So um, just for your benefit, Sasha, the way to do this is stay inside our dashboard environment, okay? But then have have another tab up with the Facebook group so you can sort of go over there and look at comments. And This and, is what I have, yeah. All right, cool. All right, can you guys hear us? Can you hear and see us, question mark? And hey. please hammer us with questions. Yep, they showed. Uh, Ricarda, good to see you, sweetheart. It's been a while. All right. All of that noise before this moment, you guys just, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> this, it's not a Hollywood production here. Okay, so let's get serious. Now we've got everything up and running. Um, welcome, Sheila. It's great to have you here. Ricardo, it's great to have you here. You guys come on board and we're going to have a great time on this show. Why? Well, um, well, I... Uh, mm, uh, well, okay, I'm Robert from the Vocalist Studio, and I'm a voice coach, as you guys may know. Online courses, um, book, methodology that helps singers learn how to train, how to train, how to work, work out, to build the motor skills and the strength and coordination to sing better. Because singing is an athletic endeavor, all right? And... And yes, we're sort of born with certain levels of talent and, and gift and all this. That, that, that's something to consider. But, you know, most of what you want to do and dream to do and aspire to do as a, as a singer, at least physically, has a lot to do with motor skills and training and working hard. So that's what me and my distinguished guest do. We help singers learn how to train. And I would like to introduce to you one of the best contemporary voice coaches in the beautiful country of Germany and TBS master certified instructor and my ancient friend, maestro Sasha Dietmann. Hello everyone. <laughs> As you have heard, he is calling me the mighty one. <laughs> But first of all, um, um, let's have a question. Is there some German people, except of Ricarda here, is there a special reason to talk German? If someone wants to have a translation to German, just give us a sign, give us a post, send a text to Robert, whatever that we can do, translate, uh, all that stuff we are doing here. Ricarda, hallo, ich freue mich, dass du da bist. Das ist gigantisch von dir. Okay. Yep, as Robert has said, I'm a voice coach. I'm also a psychotherapist. And yes, they call me a master certified instructor with the TBS methodology here in Germany. Uh, some of you guys may know my name. You may know me. Uh, I have hosted, I think, 10 or 12 masterclasses together with Robert here in Europe. 
Uh, hosted is not the right term. Uh, we did it together. That's the better term for it. <laughs> how about, we how about did it? Your yeah. Off too. yeah, work your ass off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know there were some situations at at Mickey D's uh, where we're talking about coffee or in the nighttime <laughs> when it was really hard to get from one show to the next one. <laughs> These were the days we were young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, th yeah. Thanks a lot. Just uh, um, 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 FYI, warning for you guys: um, if you have the opportunity, the lovely opportunity to spend an extended amount of time with Sasha, as I have on numerous occasions, weeks upon end, um, on tour and what have you, um, and you and you have to have coffee in the morning, be careful suggesting Mickey D's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I think it's, a, it's funny. Okay, here's the story. So I have to have coffee in the morning, and I and we would take coffee. And of course, Sasha is carting me around in his Mercedes and and driving me around because I had you know I don't have any wheels, and so that means that unfortunately he's got to take his gas to go get co cafe at, at at Mickey D's. Mickey D's was the only place available, but he doesn't like McDonald's. That's the thing. He doesn't like McDonald's. Do you? you don't like McDonald's? Why don't you like McDonald's? What's your what's your what's your deal with McDonald's? I like food, and this is not food. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. But anybody will tell you that their coffee's not bad. Actually, <laughs> it's great when it's your only option. There, there, there's there are some things that the American guys have to learn, and this yeah. is one of it. <laughs> Mickey D's don't offer coffee in Germany. <laughs> Maybe it's like that in the United States. Maybe the coffee there is really great, but yeah. I cannot. Okay, let's change because yeah. I yeah. think I don't want to get problems with Mickey D's when we are talking about this here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll sponsor us one day. All right, let's get to it. Uh, as I say, Sasha Dittman is a talented voice coach and a psychologist. <laughs> and um, I know him well, and I am completely, really quite honored, this, uh, probably beyond honored, um, that Sasha has spent literally the last year producing um, the world's first TVS technique, training technique methodology course, plus, and I say plus because it has his ideas in there too. So it's a TVS, that's our ideas as an as a, as a organization, a methodology and everything that he knows about chaining and singing for a lifetime in the language of German. We have a German language TVS singing course, and um, that's an amazing feat. And so I don't know what the population is in Germany right now, German speakers, but it's something like 85 million, probably. That's Around about 85 million people here, yeah. About 85 million. So that means that this individual, Maestro Dietmann, seriously, I'm not trying to just be dramatic, just produced a program that can reach out to, let's call it 100 million German-speaking singers. We have to include Austria, don't we? It's Austria, it's Swiss, some parts of, of some small countries around. Yes, German language. So, maybe we are going up to 100 million people, yeah. At least, at least a hundred million German-speaking singers around the world can now access a proven methodology, an online course for a really good deal, right, Sasha? Um, out at Udemy, and and you can get more services from Sasha on another website. We can maybe we talk about that later, but just that initial entry point, that course of his, currently out at Udemy is a killer deal if you are german and you are a singer go check out this course and we're going to talk a little bit about the production of this course and how it went down and lessons that he learned and things that, that he feels are pretty important for you to know about that um sasha if you would also just um speak german for us too i think we could do, do a little more german in this in this yeah. show um so the people because that is sort of the point isn't it Okay, die Story, die Story ist die, dass äh, Robert vor vielen Jahren schon einen großen Udemy-Kurs aufgesetzt hat, der mittlerweile fast 50.000 Mal weltweit verkauft worden ist. Man darf nicht vergessen, es sind über 100.000 Gesangsschüler von Robert mittlerweile unterrichtet worden in über 170 Ländern der Welt. Äh, Robert hat mich gebeten, 
diesen Kurs eben auch auf Deutsch zu machen. Äh, auf Deutsch nicht nur im Sinne der TBS-Methode, sondern auch meine persönlichen Einflüsse hier mit reinzubringen, was ich auch wirklich gerne gemacht habe. Seien es die gesanglichen Einflüsse, die ich über die letzten 10, 15 Jahre in verschiedensten Gesangslehren gesammelt habe, seien es aber auch tatsächlich diese psychologisch-pädagogischen äh, Aspekte, die ich durch meine andere hauptberufliche Tätigkeit hier eben noch mit einbringen kann. Äh, das sind Sachen, die ziehen sich wirklich quer durch den ganzen Kurs in vielen, vielen Details wird hier teilweise auf Nuancen eingegangen, die es wirklich wert machen, diesen Kurs, die Erklärungen in dem Kurs, wirklich gut anzuhören, gut Revue passieren zu lassen, gerne nochmal ein bisschen zurückzuspulen und sich das Ganze nochmal anzuhören, um dann eben, nachdem er die Klär Erklärungen verstanden hat, im weiteren Gang auch die Übungen, die ich zusammen mit euch mache, mitzumachen, um dann im weiteren Gang die verschiedenen Übungen und Techniken, die wir hier verwenden, zusammenzubringen, um dann wiederum im Weiteren, wenn ihr verstanden habt, wie Onsets oder wie Massen oder wie der Stimmapparat funktioniert, dieses Ganze dann auch selbst trainieren zu können. Weil ich bin nicht der Freund davon zu sagen, es gibt nur eine Gesangslehre. Das ist in meinen Augen nicht das Richtige, denn Gesang ist immer das Gleiche, egal welche Lehre es ist. Aber ich bin ein sehr, sehr, sehr großer Freund davon, Menschen Wissen zu vermitteln. Werkzeuge zu geben, um mit der Kenntnis dieser Werkzeuge für sich selbst das Haus zu bauen, das sie haben wollen. Und das ist mein persönliches Ziel gewesen, als ich den Kurs erstellt habe. Das habe ich versucht, in einer guten Struktur unterzubringen. Ich denke, es ist mir soweit gelungen und es dauert gar nicht mehr so lange, bis dieser Kurs online ist. Jetzt übergebe ich gerne an Robert. So, so cool, so cool. Um, thank you. So, <lacht> I don't have a clue what you said. Not real, not, not, actually, I, there are there are some German words that come through. I mean, it makes a little bit of sense to me, but um, I know what you're talking about. Thank you. Fantastic. So I'm going to ask you some <laughs> questions, and I want you to try to be snappy and quick um, in English, and then then let's see if we can also uh, do it in German as well. Three things. So you spent a year make producing this course, and let's just sort of cut to the chase. If people take your vocal training course. What are, and they follow the instructions that you give them and they practice and commit because it's a team effort, right? What are the three things, are the, what are the three things that if they're the perfect student and they have a big heart and they get after it, that they will learn or take away from your course in terms of bettering their, their singing? What, what would you say, three things that you are certain they will learn or be able to do after taking your course? The three things, the three things that they will learn or were able to do are at very first point, knowledge and understanding is line number one. That's very important to me. I pointed it out in German before. Uh, it's important to me that my student or that any singer knows how it works, how my configuration works, how my sound works, how how singing works in all senses, in acoustic senses, in physical senses, I provide knowledge. They know what they are doing. They know their tools. I'm, I'm teaching them how to use a tool. I'm not teaching how to, to, to burn a hole, but I'm teaching how to use a tool to build a house. This is what's important for me at very first. Next important point is, My structure inside the course has a lot of, of small details in every single lesson. These details are sometimes not exactly for that lesson, but they're important to know inside that context for the lesson. And the next point is this detail can help with the next problem, even if it's not inside that lesson. So there's a big reason to, to listen fine and clearly to everything inside. The third point is they have fun. They just have fun. Sometimes they will see maybe a stupid action from me. Why not? I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. That, that's a good answer. So I, I, I'm summarizing what you said. Um, and I agree as a, one of the things that's cool about the, the methodology is that for everybody is it removes mystery of singing, the mystery of how do I sing a high note? How do I get through my vocal break from here 
you know, to the head voice without choking and pushing. How do I sound better? How do I increase my endurance? And the program, your program will answer those questions. Having clarity, having a, a clear understanding, even if you're not doing it yet and your execution still needs work, just simply having a clarity on knowing where I'm going, what I need to do, really need to do, um, is motivating. Um, because then at that, that, that point, it's just dedication and sweat equity, right? Um, the other thing I heard you say is um, because of the details, probably a lot of that in the onsets, in the onsets um, which is how you start a note, it's one of the technique elements in the program, um, you will be able to troubleshoot your problems. The, uh, the we we train onsets in the methodology, which is how you start a note. This is an onset. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just how I started. All right, and that was a good onset. This is a bad onset. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a bad onset. I exaggerated, but the point is, is if the onset's good, then the training or singing that follows will be good. And we have eight ways of starting that Sasha will te be teaching you in German. The onsets help us get after the muscles inside the mechanism so that we can build that motor skills and the coordination that we talked about earlier. But also, when you get really good at it, when you understand the onsets, you can use them to troubleshoot problems with your voice. Thank you, Sasha. Very good and fun. You know what? Voice coaching, voice training, and it has to be fun. It needs to be fun. It, it, it can't be a drag. I mean, it is music and art at the end of the day. And it really can be fun, Like unlike something like accounting which i'm not sure that actually can ever be fun but that's just me i got a d in accounting but um singing and voice training should be fun so that's great thank you i think it's i think it's really important that it, there's a lot of fun inside because if you really want to be a great singer or if you want to really make some progress you have to work for it you really have to do training this is like you go to the fitness center every week two times per week and you're pumping muscles for hours it's exactly exactly the same what we are doing in singing and we should have fun with it yeah. because it's it's such a great great feeling i that's an experience i made these days these days as i produced the videos i made new experience with all these old techniques i know from tvs i make new experience get excited feelings about my my placement where where uh where, where the edgy tone sounds like where, where the difference between a neutral a and uh and an edgy a uh feels like figured out how can i use it to work around the break just with 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 uh, moving my placement just with moving from a from a neutral vowel to a uh edging vowel helps a lot to go over the passaggio to bridge from chest voice to head voice and a small detail i have to say robert you said hitting high notes we are not hitting high notes sorry dude you taught me that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are singing a higher frequency that's right but that's on you to explain you tell you taught it to me <laughs> yeah, yeah, careful, careful. That's a challenge. I might put you on the spot. <laughs> One thing I like to say here's here's I've always I've always always said this, and I know you'll agree. <laughs> There's many reasons why any anything that you put your heart behind should be fun, especially voice training. There's a reasons why it should be fun. Uh, just just fun for fun's sake, of course. But but there's a practical reason why it needs to be fun, and it's simply this. The voice training needs to be the practicing, the work needs to be fun, because if it's not fun, students wash out. They wash out, they quit. If it's not fun, if you're not having fun, even if you're struggling and you're working on a, you know, something and a song and it's grabbing you and you're having problems, that doesn't necessarily mean just because you're having a challenge or a problem doesn't mean that you're not like having fun working on it. You have to keep it fun because, and this is not just for, coaches advice but advice for students too um keep it fun so that you don't wash out so you can come back and keep practicing if practice if practicing and training is fun then you'll do it more often which by the way and i don't want to go down you know get into the weeds here too much and get off point too much but it is another reason why me and sasha and our students we advocate training 
with amplification and mics. Okay, it's great to be able to hear yourself and have amplification. That's that that's sort of obvious. The other piece that's not so obvious is the reason, one reason why I use these in voice training is because it's fun. It's fun to have a mic in your hand. It's fun to hear yourself amplified, you know? So that's that's the fun story. All right. So um uh so Sasha when you were working on your course, I think you sort of hit on it, and I'd like you to um, elaborate just a little bit on this. Is you, So you were working on the TVS methodology, which when you're producing lesson content on something that you are already familiar with, but you, but you begin to produce videos and course content, it forces you to dive even deeper, doesn't it? Like you go into a rat hole of um exploration and discovery of the content you thought you already knew really well and then you realize oh um gosh i'm really exploring and discovering more about the thing that i thought i already knew and i know it even better so i just wonder if you could share with viewers and students that are interested in your course um maybe two things two things that were maybe aha moments for you about the methodology that would that will help them as, as singers that amplified that came to life more when, just in the process of working what was your transformation a couple moments of transformation that you went through just producing this course okay uh, based just on singing it was how can i explain that i'm pretty familiar with the eight onsets I'm pretty familiar with the physical vocal modes. I'm pretty familiar with the acoustic modes we use in TVS. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with workflows. I'm pretty familiar with these integrated training routines. And I use them for me. I do it for years right now because if I find a special problem inside a song i like to fix that problem and i use all these stuff as tools to get a good feeling for that song to get a good placement to get a good sound. but while i was producing that song i i figured out for myself for myself uh, a new kind of of can say it's a kind of feeling to connect a feeling to connect in sense of what does my acoustic mode do when i change just the acoustic mode while singing the same vocal which is only the same written vocal mm -hmm. but it's a different vocal in sense of placement this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago uh, with this experience to have an A in a neutral mode, change it to an A in an edgy mode. Yeah. What it yeah. makes for me. Yeah. This is this was really a, a new part of understanding. I knew it already in theory. I knew it already in practice. But to feel this work inside my mouth, inside my upper teeth, to to really feel where it where it comes from, where it shifts from a neutral to a edgy vowel, and what to hear what it makes with the sound, this this kind of amplifying, and amplifying in an edgy a eh is absolute, absolute amazing instead of the amplifying from a neutral a. Eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this oh, was I, really exciting for me. What I hear you saying, what you're hitting at is how the resonance in singing the resonance the, the the sound energy can influence the mechanics absolutely absolutely how physiology moves yeah and yeah. that that that's cool that's cool um and and so um in english and i'm going to ask you to share in german um what you just described um and put you on a spot a little bit so you're talking about acoustic modes what is it tell these people what 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 are the acoustic modes and why why are they important in in, in tvs methodology in german or in english 
both quickly. <laughs> acoustic, <laughs> acoustic modes in English. Uh, we are working in TVS with three different acoustic modes. It's called curbing, neutral, and edgy. I keep it short just to have uh, time for a translation yep. to German. Please. Curbing acoustics are acoustics which have a warm, rich, nice, smooth, sonor, soft sound, are sitting really deep in placement. And with curbing uh, acoustic vowels, you will lower your lurings. Neutral acoustic modes are, as the name say, neutral. They are between edge and curbing. Um, not so much resonance, but good to use. And the edgy vowels are vowels which are sitting in, in front of your face, in the area of your upper teeth. Uh, you can feel your teeth buzzing sometimes. Uh, really good uh, uh, amplification. And they are sound a little bit metallic, a little bit sharp, uh, have a quite different kind of, of presence. Okay, and now in German. <laughs> Yeah, German, please. Acoustic Modes in TWS. Uh, wir arbeiten hier mit drei verschiedenen Acoustic Modes. Das machen andere Gesangslehren in dem Sinne auch. Nennen es ein bisschen anders. Oder wir machen es so und uh, nennen es ein bisschen anders, wie auch immer. Uh, es gibt die sogenannten Curbing Vowels. Bei Vowels sprechen wir übrigens nicht von Vokalen im deutschen Sprachsinne. Also wir reden nicht von A, I, I, O, U, sondern wir sprechen von Gesangsvokalen. Das ist eine ganz andere Nummer. Just explain the difference between speaking vowels and singing vowels. Okay, diese Gesangsvokale unterteilt man bei uns in Curbing Vowels, die ein sehr, sehr tiefes Placement haben, die warm resonieren, die dafür sorgen, dass sich der Kehlkopf senkt. Die sind schön für Blues, für Balladen, für, für alles, was soft und sonor sein soll. Dann gibt es die neutralen Gesangsvokale, Vowels, die eben neutral platziert sind zwischen den Curbing und den Edgy Vowels. Äh, sind sehr gut handhabbar als Ausgangsbasis, um andere Tonarten zu erzeugen, beziehungsweise um von A nach B zu kommen. Es gibt dann auch noch die Edgy Vowels, die, wie wir im Deutschen sagen, vorne in der Maske sitzen. Die resonieren in der Nähe der Zähne, am harten Gaumenperlet resonieren die, haben einen eher metallischen, eher scharfen Klang und sind wiederum ganz andere Dinge. Wir unterteilen es in drei Familien, weil diese drei Familien für sich auch innerhalb der Familie gleichartige Eigenschaften haben. Wir wissen also, wir können von dem einen in der Familie leicht zum anderen in der Familie wechseln. Aber zu wechseln von einem Curving zu einem Edgy Vowel ist eine andere Sache, die ist nicht unbedingt schwieriger, aber es bewegt den kompletten Kehlapparat in seiner Konfiguration. Und das sind Sachen, die wir uns mit dem Wissen zunutze machen können, um Dinge leichter oder präsenter oder angepasster singen zu können. Dann. Bingo. <lacht> Great. Danke. All right. So, what's an onset? What's an onset in regards to the training in your course? You're teaching onsets. We talked a little bit about it already. It's apparently it's important. Can you elaborate a little bit on what an onset is and why it's important um, in German? In German. <laughs> Ein onset. Ein onset. Onset ist das englische Wort für Beginn oder für Anfang. Uh, man muss verstehen, dass der Gesang nicht da losgeht, wo man den Ton hört. Da passiert der Gesang schon längst. Der Gesang beginnt weit vorher. Das Universum ist auch nicht schon immer da. Es hat einen Urknall gehabt. Ne? Gesang beginnt tatsächlich bei der Intuition, singen zu wollen. Der Onset selber besteht aus mehreren Komponenten, je nachdem, welcher Onset es ist. Wir haben ja acht verschiedene Onsets. Je nachdem, welcher Kom On Kom Onset es ist, versteht er aus verschiedenen Komponenten. Diese Komponenten können zum Beispiel sein, eine richtige Körperhaltung, die können sein, die richtige Embouchur, Mundform, wo die Zunge ist, wo die Zähne zu sehen sind, äh, ist sehr, sehr wichtig bei verschiedenen Ansätzen. Äh, die können auch dazugehören sein, welchen genauen Ton will ich singen, das alleine schon. Der Onset hilft uns schlichtweg, am Beginn des Gesangs Dinge von vornherein richtig zu machen. Und ich halte das für unheimlich wichtig, denn wenn ich einen Ton singe, ohne dass ich vorher viele Dinge richtig gemacht habe, ist es irgendein wackeliger Ton, der niemals wirklich schön oder präsent oder ausbaufähig sein wird. 
Wenn ich allerdings mit einem guten Onset, also mit einem guten Anfang oder mit einem guten Beginn arbeite, dann kann das, was nach dem Onset an Gesang passiert, nur noch genauso gut oder besser werden. Es geht nicht anders. Ein guter Onset beinhaltet schlichtweg wirklich eine Anfangskonfiguration, die dafür sorgt, dass alles, was für die folgenden Töne notwendig ist, stimmt. Wir kennen als Gesangsschüler oft das Problem, der Gesangslehrer sagt, achte auf deine Mundform, dann achtet mal auf die Mundform. Dann sagt er, achte auf deine Stütze, dann achte ich auf die Stütze, vergesse dabei aber die Mundform. Dann sagt er, achte auf deinen Ton, dann achte ich auf den Ton, ich vergesse aber die Stütze. Mit der Mundform gebe ich mir gerade Mühe, das wird alles ganz, ganz kompliziert. Der Robert hat es mal als Chicken Chasing bezeichnet, als Hühnerjagen. Ne? Du wirst niemals fertig mit der ganzen Geschichte. Das ist der Grund, warum wir hier mit Onsets arbeiten, um wirklich von vornherein einmal Chuck und das können wir dann auf die Reise bringen. Cool. Did, did you hear the word chicken chasing? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. Did I hear something about chickens? Where... <laughs> chicken chasing, yeah? Chicken, chicken chasing, like the, like um, if, you, if, you're, if you're choking like a duck, if you're squeezing too hard, you might try the wind and release onset to release release the glottal compression, glottal compression, the deduction, and get a benefit, right? Is that, is that sort of what you're talking about? No, no, I was just talking about uh, that onsets are necessary uh, to have everything at one time fixed to have no problems with a further note. And in our early lessons, in our early master classes, I think seven, eight, nine years ago, uh, we were talking about onsets in the sense of chicken chasing. Oh, yeah. Think about your embouchure. I'm thinking about my embouchure. Think about your uh, about your breath support, and yeah. I forgot my embouchure. Yeah. <laughs> Think about your note. Oh, I forgot my breath support, and this yeah. was the reason we in invented all these onsets. You know. Yeah. So that's the history. It is chicken chasing stuff. Chasing the chicken. The chasing the chickens in English typically means it's a, it's a it's a funny metaphor for multitasking. Yeah. Like like you're, like you're running around trying to catch a chicken. But what we do with the onsets is we have this thing that we call the onset package, where the onset, the thing that we do at the beginning, for example, here, here's another onset for you guys. Here. Dust is an onset. I hope that's right. No. Me. Okay, that's an onset, and it's a good one. But inside, inside that onset are a list of things, a list of technique ideas that I trained in my program and that Sasha wants you to train in his program. Um, there's The list is probably quite big, but if we talk about maybe the first five or six things, inside my onset package, we have frequency, match the pitch. Two, get the acoustic mode, the vowel correct. Three, we have get a, a, um, a, a zupel en pochure. Shape your mouth properly, yeah. We, we have cry mode, we're thinning the vocal folds, we're crying into that onset. Um, we might have some positioning on the larynx, we might anchor or dampen our larynx on an onset. And the list goes on and on. So that collection of technical details that sit and make up an onset is called an onset package. So um, I hope I didn't steal your thunder there, but I um, thought I'd give the English listener something to uh, chew on as well. This is exactly what I said in German. Okay, great. Um, see if we have any, looks like that's true. looks like we've got a nice engagement here. Let's just take a moment yeah. to welcome people. Um, I see, I see it's interesting that it says YouTube user. Uh, by the way, we're broadcasting on YouTube right now on my channel. So getting a lot here. Here's a quick, let's just stop and take a quick question here. Why okay. am I watching this in English if it's for German class? Or is it for English speakers as well? Would you like to take that in German, please? I can. I can. <laughs> I, I will tell them because you're not able to speak German. <laughs> That's a fair answer. Yeah. Nee. Uh, es, ist, es ist tatsächlich so, uh, Robert kann nahezu kein Deutsch. Ein bisschen Deutsch kann er, bruchstückhaft. Aber wir müssen in irgendeiner Art oder Weise so kommunizieren, dass es viele verstehen, uh, dass auch das Frage-Antwort-Spiel ein bisschen funktioniert. 
Äh, wir versuchen schon das Allermeiste hier auf Deutsch in zweiter Instanz wiederzugeben. Er sagt was auf Englisch, ich beantworte es erst auf Englisch, dann auf Deutsch. Äh, dementsprechend, es werden nicht wirklich Informationen verloren gehen. Wenn ihr gezielte Fragen auf Deutsch habt, dann stellt ihr auch gezielt auf Deutsch. Ihr bekommt sie natürlich auch auf Deutsch beantwortet. Okay? Thank you. Okay. How many Germans actually speak English? I mean, it seems that most Germans do speak English and understand English. Isn't that true? I mean, yeah, this is what it feels like for me. I think 80% from all German people uh, are able to understand English. Maybe 60, 70% are able to speak English. So it's, it's, yeah, nearly common for us German. How many Americans do speak German? Uh, boy, you got me on the spot there. Um, I think we're ready. For <laughs> I have, so we're ready for our next question now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like not enough. Um, I, but I do have a memory. I, we, when we did our master classes together in the past, there was a, a, a translator. And I remember, um, it was typically we'd have a group of 60 to a hundred people in a room. When we did our master classes, I would speak in English. And the translator would tr be translating for maybe two or four people, like just a small group of people. Yeah. If that's so, it's okay. So, um, you'll uh, YouTube very good explain a bit about cry mode, please. All right, I had a question here, but I think I think our listener has a good question. So, well, that's important. Um, <laughs> Cry mode. Um, cry mode is a physical mode characterized by thinning of the vocal folds. The vocal folds literally thin out. When the vocal folds thin out, you increase your vocal fold adduction and compression. Um, you um, um, It removes pharyngeal constriction. So when you're singing high and doing complex maneuvers, it removes the choking and the pushing. It's absolutely wonderful that way. And because the sound color that comes from cry mode is very much an ancient thing. That is to say that when we make vocal sounds, vocal sounds, all of us, with a thinned out vocal fold position, I'm gonna get my vocal folds here. I'm trying to go fast, Sasha, so you can do it in German. My vocal folds, I'm in cry mode, I thin out, okay? In speech mode, right now, my vocal folds are thick and bulky. Thick and bulky vocal folds do not help you bridge through the passaggio and sing in the head voice and do the things the singers do. So what we need to do is we need to reconfigure many things. One of the things that I believe is maybe the most important thing to reconfigure physically is to get the vocal folds to elongate and thin out, which we call cry mode, okay? Cry mode helps the voice to, as I say before, give you better compression. It removes pharyngeal constriction, especially when you amplify high frequencies, which singers need to do a lot. And because the sound that comes from this position, the sound color that comes from this position is very ancient, it's <coughs> okay? So when an audience hears you make vocal sounds that come through a thinned out position, it communicates heightened emotion. It communicates amplified emotion. It does not only communicate crying and sadness. It could, if the lyrics and the context of the song was about sadness, it would. But it's not only about tears, okay? Cry mode emits a sound color that hits the audience ear that communicates on a subconscious level Amplified emotion. It could be envy. It could be the excitement. It could be anger. It could be jealousy. It could be all the human emotions amplified when you sting through elongated vocal folds, which we call cry mode. Okay. So those are some reasons why it's absolutely critical that you Germans, English, everybody on the planet that wants to sing great, learn how to get command and control over the vocal folds and thin out into cry mode and then sing through it. Thank you for your patience, Sasha. If you would then explain that to our good friends in German, please. <laughs> Five million words. How many times do I have right now? I did. <laughs> I did my best. Ich, ich versuche es ein bisschen abzukürzen. Die Bildsprache von Robert ist, glaube ich, auch sehr, sehr erklärend. Die meisten werden es im Großen und Ganzen verstanden haben. Uh, Cry Mode, einer unserer acht physischen Gesangsmodi. Äh, ist uns tatsächlich mit einer der wichtigsten äh, Gesangsmodi geworden, weil das der Gesangsmodus ist, der dafür sorgt, dass unsere Stimmbänder sich längen, ausdünnen, filigraner arbeiten können. 
Unsere Stimmbänder sind in einem primitiven Sprachmodus, eher, eher dick, eher klobig, äh, relativ unbeweglich. Das macht es uns unheimlich schwer, äh, gewisse Tonhöhen zu erreichen oder ums Passage zu britschen. Äh, in dem Moment, wo wir sehr viel Cry-Mode trainieren, dünnen wir die Stimmbänder aus, wir längen sie aus, wir machen sie greifbarer, handhabbarer, wir machen sie koordinierbarer, wir erlangen wirkliche Muskelkontrolle, wirkliche Kontrolle über unsere Stimmbänder und sind von daher in der Lage, eine ganz andere Art von Gesangsemotion zu transportieren. Das ist jetzt mal ein relativ neues Wort. Äh, Gesangsemotion nicht nur im Sinne von, ich kann dieses Lied singen und es ist richtig gesungen, sondern Gesangsemotion im Sinne von, ich kann auch die Botschaft in den Song mitbringen. Egal, ob das eine Ballade ist, wie zum Beispiel Nothing Else Matters, oder ob das ein total glückliches Lied ist. Lieder, die Gefühle auf dieser Weise transportieren, werden sehr, sehr oft, ob bewusst oder unbewusst, ist vollkommen egal, von dem Sänger im Cry-Modus dargestellt. Das ist das, was im Kern passiert. Der kann sehr gut trainiert werden, eben mit unserem Onset, den wir hierfür verwenden. Äh, geht manchmal vom Training her tatsächlich ein wenig in den Pulse and Release Onset rein. Dieser Modus, da ist am besten trainierbar, einfach weil man auf diese Weise hier auch wieder alle Konfigurationen korrekt hat, um in diesem kompletten Onset Package mit diesem Cry oder Fry Cry beginnen, wie es richtigerweise beheißt im äh, Pulse and Release Onset, die Sache gleich von vornherein richtig zu konfigurieren. Und ich habe tatsächlich, ich weiß nicht, ob der Eggy da ist, ich habe tatsächlich gestern Abend erst so eine Erfahrung gehabt mit dem, I had an example last evening and this is what I explain to people right now, I will explain it to you later, maybe yeah. this guy is online right now, this is the reason why I tell the story regarding Cry Mode, regarding the Cry Mode. Uh, mein Freund sendete mir eine Aufnahme von sich. Er hat den Song Major Tom für sich mit der Gitarre aufgenommen und hat mich nach meiner gesangslehrerfachlichen Meinung gefragt. Es hat sich wunderschön angehört, es war absolut toll, es war prächtig gesungen. Rein technisch betrachtet habe ich in diesem Song rausgehört, dass ein bisschen Wind in den feinen filigranen Stellen drin ist. Habe ihm dann ein bisschen Tipps gegeben, die eben aus der Ecke Cry-Modus kommen. Ein paar von den TWS-Werkzeugen gesagt, die man verwenden kann. Vier Stunden später, es war nachts um elf, schickte mir zweite Aufnahme von diesem Song Major Tom. Und es war alles ausgemerzt, was ich bemerkt habe. Und ich fand es absolut gigantisch. Also, Ecke, gute Arbeit. Robert, just for you to know. One of my, one of my students, Ecke, he is a guitar player and a, and a uh, drummer also. Uh, sended me yesterday evening a recording from himself playing guitar and singing the song Major Tom. Yep. Uh, I listened to it. He asked me for my opinion on that. I said, it's really nice. It's really cute. It's really wonderful what he did. But only in the technical point of view, it sounds a little bit much air, a little bit much breath in the, in the very thin and the very fine lines from that song. And I gave him some advices coming from the corner from the cry mode. Mm -hmm. Yep, vocal fold closure and control about everything. That was it. Four hours later, he sent me a new recording, has fixed every problem inside, and I was so proud of him. This is what tools can do when you know how to handle your tool. Yep, das können Werkzeuge wenn wir wissen, wie wir mit Werkzeugen umgehen. It's on you, Robert. Come on. Hey, hey, it, uh, it's interesting that you mention um, Major Tom, uh, David Bowie. As I think you may know, I did a video of Major Tom by David Bowie. Okay. David, have you seen it? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe in history, but huh. right now I don't have it in my mind. Well, it's very relevant to what we're talking about. It's quite coincidental. Um, so go out to my YouTube channel, Robert Lenti, type in Robert Lenti, um, Space Oddity. I think the song is actually called Space Oddity, Major Tom. Okay. I did this. And would you believe me if I told you, um, you know, by the way, the video is good. It's really great. People really like it. I did, I did a great job. Would you believe me if I told you that the experience that I, the lesson that I took away from learning David Bowie's Major Tom Space Oddity and performing it and putting it on camera, that the work that I did on that video was the seed that began cry vocal mode training in TBS. 
It's because of my work on the David Bowie song <laughs> that I'd explore different vocal. I was trying to get the David Bowie sound, right? Uh -huh. So I, so I thought, well, I'm going to try sort of crying into, into the singing a little bit more to get that David Bowie sound. And it, and it went great. It sounds great. People like it. And I came away from that thinking, oh, I'm onto something here. And it's not only going to help singing David Bowie, but we, we, we now find that it helps everything. So that's very interesting. I had, I had the same experience three years ago with a different song. It was uh, the Somewhere Over the Rainbow from uh, Israel I See. Yep. You know yep. this Hawaiian guy? Somewhere over the rainbow. Right. <laughs> Same experience. Yeah, and I want to do. I want to play. I want to do something here that I do with my English speaking students real okay. quick. I'd like you to do it in German because it's so important. Okay. I lean forward and I look my students right in the camera, and I say this on the first lesson. I say, and I'm not just trying to be dramatic. I, I absolutely mean what I'm about ready to say. Cry vocal mode is not a choice. It's not something like vibrato or distortion where you sort of make a decision or a choice where you want to use it or not. Not really, not in my opinion. Cry mode is a necessity. You have to put the vocal folds in this thinned out position to sing. Cry mode is not something you add to your singing. Cry mode is singing. It is the configuration for singing. You must, you don't have a choice. You singers out there in any language, you must train to get command and control over the cry reflex. You don't have a choice. If you wanna sing great, there's a lot to learn, a lot of things that are gonna help you. But yeah. the, first thing, the first thing that I, in my opinion, I'm not speaking for Sasha, but first thing in my opinion that I need you guys to do is to configure the vocal folds in, that, in the cry mode. It's that, important it's so important that's why i'm going through this drama right now sasha if you agree with me you don't have to agree with me but if you agree with i me, absolutely I agree with you and i like to translate it for the german people it, because it, you're so right it. i really want to um, smack them i really want to smack them in the nose with this let them let them hear it yeah aber ich bin wirklich absolut einig mit robert uh, wir haben acht onsets ja acht onsets haben acht verschiedene funktionen man kann sie für acht verschiedene mehr als acht verschiedene dinge verwenden aber tatsächlich der wichtigste der elementarste der im Gesang am absolut brauchbarsten Onset ist definitiv der Cry Mode. Also es gibt oftmals Situationen, da können wir wählen, wollen wir Vibrato drin haben, wollen wir es sonor klingen lassen oder eher metallisch klingen lassen. Wir haben oft die Wahl. Beim Cry Mode haben wir keine Wahl, wenn wir ganz ehrlich sind. Natürlich können wir anfangen und irgendwelche ganz, ganz lauten, tollen Sachen zu machen. Dann werden wir nie in der Lage sein, eine Ballade zu singen. Natürlich können wir auch irgendwelche Wind and Release haften Sachen eben für, für Balladen oder für, für ganz andere Geschichten verwenden. Dann werden wir niemals in der Lage sein, die präsenten Sachen zu singen. Wenn wir in der Lage sein wollen, alles zu singen mit vollkommener Freiheit, was wir uns wünschen, egal ob laut oder leise, egal ob präsent oder zurückhaltend, dann braucht es absolute Stimmbandkontrolle. Wir brauchen eine Kontrolle darüber, wie sehr, auf welche Weise wir unsere Stimmbänder schließen. Es geht nicht nur um die Kraft, die Dinger zusammenzuhalten. Es geht auch um das kontrollierte Loslassen. Es geht um das, nicht nur um das Schwingen, es geht auch um das Schwingen lassen bei der ganzen Sache. Nur das kann die Emotion transportieren. Und da sind wir eben beim ganz wichtigen Punkt von TWS, den hat Robert so nicht gesagt. Wir betreiben bei TWS tatsächlich Muskeltraining. Wir bearbeiten, wir betreiben Koordinationstraining. Wir arbeiten an Muskelerinnerungen im Sinne von automatische Reflexe, die passieren. Und all diese Trainings machen wir, um dann nie mehr dran zu denken müssen, wenn wir auf der Bühne sind, weil es dann automatisch passiert. Cry Mode, absolut wichtig. Robert, just uh, for you to know, I explain the importance of Cry Mode for itself. But I also explained that we are doing a lot of muscle training in TVS. We do a lot of coordination training in TVS. We do a lot of muscle memory building routines in TVS. 
and this always sounds really technically it's always hard work in the gym it's only work in the gym but we do it because when we are on stage we don't have even to think about singing because it works automatically yeah and this is what i really wanted to point out in german here this was important to me because this is my experience for the for the last 15 years i had really sometimes there where i was technically on the road then i had sometimes i was emotionally on the singing road but i understood you have to have the muscles you have to have the muscle memory you have to have all this stuff inside you and yeah. you will do it automatically it's like football players they are their training is inside the gym they are training in the gym they're running around the field nothing what they do in training you will ever see on the field but on the field it works what they did in gym train on the inside execute on the outside yep yeah it's just another way of saying that voice training has to be a physical endeavor it's a sport folks it's it's like ice skating or gymnastics or putting doing layups in basketball it requires great physical strength and coordination plus a beautiful aesthetic so really more like like, like ice skating and gymnastics is about great athleticism plus art there are some sports that sort of blend art with athleticism together they would be good two examples i've always thought that singing was like dancing or ice skating or gymnastics where it's great physical motor skills and strength plus the art and the expression and all that but yeah just just great this is good this is good discussion um yes so um by the way i can go over a little bit if you can um Sasha, can you go over a little bit? Have a couple, a couple more questions for you. You mentioned routines. This is a good, this is a good time to ask you this question. Ask you to explain in German. So we talk about routines. All right, motor skills, routines in the program in your new German course. What is a TVS ITR? If you could explain what an ITR is for these guys and sort of our secret sauce and what we do with our ITRs and why that's sort of a benefit for their training. That would be helpful. Integrierte Trainingsroutinen bedeutet schlichtweg alles, was wir in TWS gelernt haben, für uns selbst auf eine Weise zusammenzustellen, die uns bei unserem aktuellen Problem, das wir für uns selbst entdeckt haben, weil wir jetzt die Kompetenz haben, so zusammenzustellen, dass wir dieses Problem beseitigen können. Uh, ITRs bestehen aus vielen verschiedenen Dingen, die bestehen aus dem richtigen Onset, die bestehen aus dem richtigen Placement, die bestehen aus dem richtigen akustischen Mode, die bestehen aus dem richtigen physischen Mode, die uh, gehen auch darauf raus, was ich danach draus mache, ob ich Sirens singe, ob ich auf einem klaren Ton bleibe, ob ich in einer speziellen Routine unterwegs bin und was ich damit in welcher Tonhöhe oder Tonlage erreichen möchte. Letztendlich sind es Werkzeuge, die natürlich ein bisschen standardisiert mit angeboten werden, einfach weil es ein paar ITRs gibt, die immer gut funktionieren. Die haben wir ausmanövriert. Aber nichtsdestotrotz sind sie in der Grundlehre eigentlich etwas, was sich jeder, der sich die Kompetenz im Kurs erworben hat, selbst zusammenstellen kann. Weil jeder Sänger hat tatsächlich eigene Probleme. Ich habe schon mal gesagt, es gibt nicht eine Gesangsmethode, die für alle funktioniert. Das würde bedeuten, dass alle 100 Millionen Sänger auf der Welt gleich funktionieren. So ist es aber nicht. Wir haben auch keine 100 Millionen Gesangsmethoden, wo wir jeden einzelnen Sänger verarzten können. Deswegen geben wir dieses Wissen mit, dass ihr mit Hilfe von ITRs hier einbetten und für euch nutzen könnt. Ja, yeah, cool. Quickly in English. In the TBS Methodology, we've developed what we call an ITR. And that stands for Integrated Training Routine. Our students and our coaches don't just do vocal workouts, where you're just sort of making a vocal sound over... Some kind of value you may not be aware, really care about, and completely clueless about onsets. That's not what we're doing. And by the way, if you did that, you'd probably get some. You probably get some gains. You probably get something out of that. At least you're moving the body, right? But in TVS methodology, we've ta we've broken down the anatomy of a vocal workout. A vocal workout can actually be written in a formula, yeah. and when you can formulate a vocal workout, you can then 
write formulas to address specific needs. In other words, you can prescribe a unique vocal training workout routine for you and or your students needs. The process is called integrated training routines. What does it integrate? Pretty simple. It integrates these onsets that we talked about earlier, how we start. It integrates, which is sort of the physiology element, the motor skills element that integrates the acoustic modes that we talked about earlier, which means your vowels. What, you know, am I going to train on an ah or an a or an oo? That sound color, it integrates the vowel. Ont. It integrates the content. So when you buy the program, the purchase, the, the course with Sasha, you get access to, to pre-recorded scales, workout files, and sort of the, the facilities, the content that you purchased. So onset plus vowel plus a workout, a vocalese. That equals an integrated training routine. It's cool. It's cool because, it allows, as I say, it allows you to sort of understand a workout, to write your own workouts for yourself and your students, and that's what an ITR is. Perfectly explained, perfectly explained. I'm proud of you, Robert. I, <laughs> I'm really hard. proud. I, 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 just, I, just, I just get a private message right now. Just, just a second, I have to do this. This is important to me personally. <laughs> I have to do this. Got a private message right now from a friend from Florida. No, I know him uh, for a long time. He's watching right now. Cool. And uh, he is one of, of the few guys, I will call him a master of cry mode. So if you're still online and if you like, just type thumb something and say hi. Okay? So that's it. I don't want to say any names until he has written. Okay, Robert, you're on. <laughs> yeah, any great singer, I find that any really great singer is thinning the vocal folds and in cry mode. Yeah, but there, but there, but there are some singers that do it stronger and more than others. Yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure. I, for example, uh, Klaus Fein from the Scorpions, he's very cry ish, it seems, very sort of lots of cry mode there. Um, how about uh, Robert Smith from The Cure? Lots of cry mode, if you're familiar with The Cure. Yeah. Um, Robert Plant, lots of thinning, lots of cry, lots of cry. Uh, but they all, they all do it. Um, well, cool. Do we have any other questions, you guys? How are we doing out here? We have, um, all right, got a pretty good, pretty good retention here. We've got lots of people still watching. Um, Sasha, I'm happy to go on a little bit if you'd like. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. Do you have any questions for me? Do you want to put me on the spot? I can't speak German. Oh, <laughs> okay. Then ask me anything, and I will reply in German for the for the guys outside here. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. All right, I got a good one for you. Why do we not want to hit high notes? <laughs> because they get hurt. <laughs> they are sensible, they get hurt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Roberts, Roberts Frage ist uh, absolut berechtigt. Uh, man spricht im Englischen immer davon, to hit a high note. Uh, heißt, so viel, heißt im Übersetzen so viel wie, ich will einen hohen Ton erreichen. Erreichen oder treffen oder irgendwie rankommen an das Ding. Und das ist tatsächlich wegen das Problem, das wir oft in unserem bildlichen Gesangsverständnis haben. Ähm, hohe Töne treffen, hohe Töne erreichen, funktioniert nicht. Und in TBS sprechen wir genau genommen auch nicht von hohen Tönen, sondern wir sprechen nur von hohen Frequenzen. Es ist wie auf dem Klavier, hier unten ist das C, hier oben ist das andere C. Es ist nur eine andere Frequenz. Denn das Instrument, das den Ton macht, unsere Stimmbänder, ist genau das Gleiche. Und die Art, wie die Frequenz transportiert wird, die Art, wie die Stimmbänder dazu konfiguriert sind, macht die Frequenzgeschwindigkeit und dadurch erscheint der Ton an sich höher. Deswegen möchte ich lieber von Frequenzen sprechen, als davon, dass ich einen hohen Ton in irgendeiner Art oder Weise erreiche. Erreichen ist immer was, das mache ich von unten, das ist unheimlich schwierig, da muss ich auf die Zehenspitzen gehen, im Bildlichen gesprochen. Lieber singe ich eine Frequenz, die meinetwegen in der höheren oder in der tieferen Frequenz liegt, ganz gerne, doch erreichen, das ist eine ganz komische Geschichte, das wird nicht funktionieren. Okay, I did my job, Robert. All right, um, I have a couple, two more questions for you. This is one that I know you'd like to an opportunity to answer that I need, that we need to put in here. We know you are a certified psychotherapist, psychologist in, in Germany, right? Okay. Okay. So how is your experience as a 
you know, somebody that deals with head cases and, and, uh, and I mean that, and I, I, I want, I mean that in a, in, in, in a respectful way. I'm trying, I'd like to, I'd like to mean that in a respectful way, but how does your work as a psychologist and working with people, how did that influence or manifest, you know, show itself inside your course? Um, or did it, did it, did it, did it influence the way you taught or are there certain lessons inside your course that sort of hit at the head a little bit and that sort of there's, thing? There's not a special lesson inside my course, which is kind of a psychology lesson or anything like that. Okay. Uh, but it has a lot of influence inside uh, with psychological components. But these are the small details at the side from the course. You have to view the whole time. Just explain it uh, uh, on German. Uh, ja, der Robert punkt jetzt aus, ich bin Psychotherapeut. Und er hat gefragt, ob ich meine psychotherapeutischen Kenntnisse oder Wissen in irgendeiner Art oder Weise in Form von Lektionen im Kurs untergebracht habe. Nein, das habe ich bewusst nicht gemacht. Ganz bewusst nicht gemacht. Ich weiß, dass es manche Leute affektieren könnte. Oh mein Gott, jetzt macht der Psychotherapeut hier was. Im Gegenteil. Ich habe dieses Wissen, diese, sagen wir mal, Kompetenz, die ich da habe, versucht, in die Videos selber einfließen zu lassen, im Sinne von der Art, wie sie gemacht sind, im Sinne von Bemerkungen, wann sie wo wie stattfinden, was sie mit einem machen. Vielleicht auch mal ein klitzekleiner Scherz, um die ganze Sache aufzulockern. Ich versuche, so ranzugehen, dass es jeder versteht. Ich weiß, es gibt Leute, die sind eher so gepolt, es gibt Leute, die sind anders gepolt, es gibt verschiedene Bildungsniveaus. Mir ist es wichtig, jeden zu erreichen. Das heißt nicht, dass ich eine einfache Sprache gewählt habe, das heißt aber, dass ich eine Sprache gewählt habe, die bei den Menschen ankommt. Ne? Und das ist die so hauptpsychologische Komponente, die ich eingebaut habe. Letztendlich kann man aber auch wissen, dass im Gesang selber unheimlich viel Psychologie passiert. Denn nur wenn unsere Intuition die ist, dass wir das so machen, wie wir es machen wollen, nur wenn die Intuition stimmt und die kommt aus der Psyche, dann wird das Ganze hinten raus auch funktionieren. Aber das ist so, dass man es nicht wirklich direkt merkt, mit eingebettet. Dann Okay. Um, how are you doing on time? Um, I have plenty of time. All right. What? Just, just watching through the comments right now. Yep. All right. What sort of commitment does it take? Here's a practical question that I hear often in English too. Like, how much do I have to practice before I get feel results, real results? And let's just assume that means freedom of movement from the chest voice to the vocal break into the head voice, getting the registration going, a, a good, decent sound, building your some endurance, getting cry mode going, just really, you know, at the next level, sort of a yellow or green belt. How much time, practice time, should somebody plan on committing to to actually get real results? Um, in English, I like to say it's 30 to 120 minutes per session, three to six days a week, approximately for 90 days based on the individual. That's, that's my, that's my answer to that. But I would like you to share your answer to that. People want to know They kind of, well, if I get, if I buy your course, do I have time to do it? What's it going to my, take? my answer is clearly not directly about days or hours or anything. Okay. My first point of view is you should not only watch the videos, you should do the work. This is my very first point, and I will start with this point in German, and then I came to your points. <laughs> die, Haupt, die Hauptfrage ist, die Frage, die gestellt wurde, ist, wie lange benötigt man in der Regel, um erste Resultate zu erzielen? Und mir ist es immer ganz wichtig auszupunkten, die Resultate kommen nicht vom Video anschauen. Die Resultate kommen nicht vom, ich gucke mir das jetzt mal an und dann kann ich das. Die Resultate kommen nur davon, dass man trainiert. Wenn man trainiert, dann sage ich ganz klar, man kann allererste Erfolge innerhalb von drei, vier, fünf Tagen entdecken, davon ausgehend, man macht ein bis zwei Stunden am Tag richtig konsequent hier mit dem Programm. Na, davon reden wir jetzt mal, ja, ich würde jetzt mal sagen, vier, fünf Mal die Woche, ein, zwei Stunden am Tag. Dann hat man nach der ersten Woche echt was in der Hand. Wenn man einen neuen Level erreichen will, also nicht nur Ergebnisse spüren möchte, sondern einen neuen Level erreichen möchte, dann sage ich gerade raus, 90 Tage und ihr werdet euch nicht mehr kennen. Positiv gemeint, wirklich positiv gemeint. Nach 90 Tagen ist ein neuer Level für euch erreicht. Wenn man jetzt ganz fleißig ist und nochmal ein, zwei Monate dranhängt, mit gleicher Konsequenz, dann wird sich das Ganze nochmal eine ganze Nummer anfühlen, 
und das wird von selbst einmassiert sein. Also tatsächlich erste Resultate in wenigen Tagen, erste neue Level innerhalb von 90 Tagen, das kann ich garantieren. Ihr müsst dafür nur eins tun, ihr müsst am Tag zwei Stunden was trainieren und macht ein, zwei Tage in der Woche Pause. Ernsthaft dranbleiben, genau trainieren, dann wird es auch so funktionieren. Ich kann allerdings auch sagen, und das ist jetzt ganz ehrlich von mir, ihr werdet niemals fertig werden, singen zu lernen. Das sage ich ganz einfach, weil ich bis heute noch nicht fertig bin und ich mache das schon mein Leben lang. Und jeder große Sänger, den ich kenne, und ich kenne viele von den ganz Großen persönlich, äh, unter anderem äh, Todd Latour aus Florida, <lacht> auch der lernt jeden Tag Neues. Robert, for your information, my last point was, After I've said uh, 90 days up to 120 days, you will reach new levels, you will get new experiences. Uh, but the final cut was, in truth, you are never really done to learn singing. This is the experience I made by myself. I'm pretty sure you made the same experience. And this is what I've pointed out uh, to my friend Todd. This is what he told me just a few days ago. Uh, he still figures out something or there figures out something. <laughs> Of course, of course. So singing and training your voice is a lifestyle. It never, training never really ends the exploration and discovery of new techniques and getting better and working out the puzzles of singing songs better. Folks, that never ends, it doesn't end. I was trained by many great voice coaches. One of them was a famous guy from Seattle, Washington. His name is Maestro David Kelly. worked with Chris Cornell, Lane Staley from Allison Chains, Jeff Tate from Queensryche, um, and Ann Wilson from Heart, Ronnie Monroe from Metal Church, many people, okay. And he used to say, he used to say to me, and he says to all of these students, and I'm gonna share this with you guys, okay? All of you. The day you think you're done, you're done. Der Tag, an dem du denkst, du bist fertig zu lernen, an dem Tag bist du gestorben. Und er hat recht. And you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so you're never really done. There's, I'm, I'm in a new band now, by the way, Sasha. I'm in a new band now. I have a whole bunch of new content and songs that I have to learn. I have to get in shape. You know, I haven't been singing for a while. I need to get in shape, all these things. I got a whole set of new vocal challenges coming my way. Vowel modifications, bridging moments, uh, you know, negotiating my way through a difficult part in a song. It's not just because I've been doing this all my life doesn't mean that that's you know, guaranteed to be easy. There might be some easier parts, but there's going to be some stuff I'm going to have to work on. All right. I'm um, singing is a puzzle and it never ends. All right. I, uh, if, is there anything else about your course that they need to know that you would like students, German students to know um, that I haven't touched on before I ask you the last question? I'm afraid to hear the last question. <laughs> you know what it is? It's coming, baby. It's coming. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> is there something I want to point, about, uh, point out about the German course? Uh, I do it directly in German. Please. Ich habe jetzt über ein Jahr Arbeit reingesteckt in diesen deutschen TVS-Kurs. Es sind fünf, sechs Stunden Videomaterial geworden. Es sind... 40, 50, fast 60, ja, noch nicht ganz fertig, fast 60 Videolektionen in der ganzen Sache drin. Ich habe tatsächlich Herzblut reingegeben. Ich habe das nicht reingegeben, weil irgendwie ganz tolle Preise auf mich wiegen oder sonst was, sondern weil ich Gesang liebe und weil ich es tatsächlich liebe, das, was ich weiß, an Menschen weiterzugeben. Ohne Schmand ist es tatsächlich so. Jeder, der mich hier privat kennt, kann das bestätigen. I love the stuff that I do and I love to educate people. And this is the reason why I made the course. This kind of passion and this kind of heart is inside this course. Und eben aus diesem Grund lege ich es euch wirklich ans Herz. Es dauert nur noch ein paar Wochen, dann wird er erscheinen. Ich hoffe, es ist diesen Monat noch. Ich arbeite wirklich knallhart jeden Tag 14 Stunden dran. Und wenn am Anfang ein Video fehlt, macht euch nicht verrückt. Das kommt ein paar Tage später nach. Das ist sicherlich nicht so schlimm. Äh, ihr werdet Spaß damit haben. Wenn es Fragen gibt, stellt die Fragen. Ich werde auf jeden Fall da sein. Wir geben alles. Okay, I've pointed out, it's about passion, about heart and... All great, oh. All great. <laughs> that's great though. that's a really great answer it's a really great answer and and you are passionate about singing in general of course and teaching and helping others you wouldn't be a psychologist if you weren't you know you wouldn't be a teacher he is a professional teacher of many kinds and uh um yeah and tvs coaches are care we care and that's why we work so hard to give you guys something real 
anyways, um, I'm super excited about this. Um, two quick questions. The next one. All right. It's not about that last weekend in Vegas. I'm not, I, I won't put you on the spot about that. <laughs> yeah, it is. So you have, you have this interesting nickname and <laughs> let's get this over with. You have this interesting nickname um, that I call you. Uh, uh, so I have this uh, endearment nickname for uh, Sasha. I call him Mighty, Mighty. And so where did you get this crazy nickname? How did you earn this nickname, Mighty, that you will never, never be able to <laughs> hear the <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember the time you were young and your mother said, don't go to this kind of people? Yeah. I have not listened to her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's translate to German. Yeah. Uh, Robert sagt gerade, uh, dass ich im Englischen den Spitznamen Mighty habe. Für die, die es nicht wissen, Mighty bedeutet so viel wie der Mächtige oder der Große oder der ganz Tolle. Und so. A brachial superlativ ist es im Englischen, äh, hier Mighty als Spitznamen zu haben. Und äh, diesen Spitznamen habe ich tatsächlich von Robert erhalten. Äh, ich habe meine Geschichte, er hat seine Geschichte. Ich lasse Robert seine Geschichte zuerst dazu erzählen, weil ich glaube, das kommt aus seinem Mund wesentlich besser. Uh, I throw the ball back to you because it sounds more funny from your mouth. Oh, about okay. this experience in, in Verona we had, yes. Okay. All right. So, so the story of the um, of how we met, really, the story of how we met, and that's that's when he got his nickname. So, I was doing a, I was preparing for a tour in Verona, Italy. Well, for many, many cities, and um, Verona, Italy was one of the stops. And there's this crazy guy from Germany named Sasha Diedmann who was sort of trying to figure out if he wanted to go or not, because in order to go to the master class. Um, in Verona, Italy, by the way, which was hosted by M Marco Tonini. Maestro Marco Tonini was our host. Um, I'll give him a shout out. He's one of Italy's um, most famous overtone singers and coaches. <laughs> He's better than us, but... Um, anyways, Marco Tonini, uh, God bless him. Hope he's doing great. We need to catch up. Anyways, we were going, I was going to Verona and Sasha was going to like drive over the Alps, I believe, and go from Germany to Italy. And so, so it was a hike. So like, geez, you know, so he calls me sort of fussing about this. I can't, I don't know if I can do this. He gives me a call and he calls me right when I'm like have five minutes to run into my studio in Seattle, Washington, to set up a PA system, get it all wired up and take on my first student. I was really running short on time. He had a million questions for me. Why should I go? Why should I do this, this and that? And I, I specifically remember I was standing next to my old Jeep and I had my phone and I said, look, look, dude, just be there. Just, <laughs> just be there, just go, just be there. And, and it'll be great. You won't, you know, and, and so anyways, long story short, he came, he was there and then he volunteered during the master class. And, um, I don't remember what it was. Maybe you do Sasha, but, but, but he tried a technique, maybe probably one of these onsets or one of these physical modes we've been talking about today. Lift up, pull back. He'll, what, do you remember what it was? Lift up, pull back. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. It was the beginning. Lift up, pull back. It was okay. the beginning. It was only a 74 pages book, not a 500 pages book. Oh, yeah. It was like a little teeny tiny black thing with typos in it. It wasn't this um, at that time. This is the fifth edition. But but we have this technique yeah. called lift up, pull back, which is a technique that, that students will try. It's, it's, in, it's in our program that helps you to sort of feel freedom of movement between the register. Anyways, apparently, allegedly, I was teaching that. Sasha tried it. He did it. He registered. And he stopped and he looked at me and he said, that was mighty. <laughs> that was mighty. Dust is mighty. <laughs> this is mighty. That was mighty. <laughs> that was mighty. He turned to everybody in the audience and he said, dust is mighty. <laughs> yes. 
that's, how it, <laughs> that's, that's how really it, how it was. That's really how it was. It was really it was my my very first really good experience of bridging from the chest voice to the head voice. It was my very first time to sing, not to reach, to sing a G4 seamless from G3 through the passaggio up to my head voice. Seamless in a good, really good quality sound. And I was really stunning. It was, wow, that's, that's mighty. That's so <laughs> mighty. You know? <laughs> and I, I created this goblet claw. You know? <laughs> yes, he but created the goblet claw. And, and today. Ganz kurz auf Deutsch. Ganz kurz auf Deutsch. Uh, für die Deutschen. Uh, deutschsprachigen und uns. Also die Geschichte ist die, ich habe Robert eigentlich über das Internet kennengelernt. Ich habe seine YouTube-Videos gesehen und uh, mich für ihn interessiert, ein paar Mal geemailt und irgendwann einmal hat er gesagt, ich soll anrufen und ich habe es nicht geschafft und habe zwei Tage später angerufen und habe gesagt, ja Mensch, was können wir machen, dass wir da live unterrichten und der war wohl wirklich echt in alle fünf Minuten vorm Auto, gerade auf dem Weg zu irgendeiner Unterrichtsstunde und ich sitze hier irgendwie, ja, ziemlich müde bei mir am Computer und erzählen dann da irgendwie Geschichten und will 10.000 Dinge wissen und er war echt in Hektik. Und irgendwann blafft er mich nur an, hör jetzt auf, so rumzufragen und komm nach Verona. Und ich habe noch gefragt, bist du, bist du noch ganz backen? Das sind 800 Kilometer quer über die Alpen für mich. Naja, scheißegal, komm nach Verona. Und ich war total perplex, bin aber tatsächlich zwei, drei Tage später nach Verona gefahren, weil ich eben rausgefunden habe, dass er dort einen Workshop hat mit dem Marco Tonini, der sich mit Obertongesang beschäftigt und eben am Nachmittag der Robert über diese Lift-Up-Pull-Back-Technik, mit der man äh, nahtlos von der Bruststimme in die Kopfstimme wechseln kann. Und an dem Tag, als wir diesen Workshop hatten, habe ich tatsächlich das erste Mal für mich selbst, das ist sehr lange her, das ist über 15 Jahre her, habe ich das erste Mal für mich selbst wirklich mit sauberem, vollem, tollen Ton von der Bruststimme durchs Passage in die Kopfstimme wechseln können und an jeder dieser Stellen von einem amerikanischen G3 auf ein amerikanisches G4, das dürfte bei uns G2, G3 sein, an jeder dieser Stellen war der Ton gleich präsent und gleich cool. Und ich fand es so unglaublich, das in fünf oder sieben Minuten Arbeit nur mit dieser Technik hinzubekommen, dass ich mich hingestellt habe und gesagt habe, Boah, das war so mächtig. <laughs> Seitdem nennt er mich Mighty. But I, but I think, but I think meanwhile, the name Mighty has different points to you. <laughs> Not only about this G4. Well, I think that, you know, just like just anybody, um, when we, um, you know, when we, when we love somebody and, and somebody's important to us, we give them endearment names. So, um, Uh, that's my endearment name for you, buddy, because I do love you and we've been partners and good friends for many years. And I think that's a benefit to your students and all of our students. You guys aren't just buying a course from somebody that, you know, I met on the street. You're, 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 you're buying a course from somebody I trust and that I know will do, do and did do a great job on this course for, for German singers. And there's, you know, there's a, there's a strong friendship and partnership behind these courses that gives it quality, I guess. And, and yeah, and yeah, more, and, we, and we, yeah, and we both ride bikes. That's the other reason we did his course. <laughs> even, <laughs> even though, even though I've got a Harley and he's got a Yamaha. And, and, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I got a motorbike and he has a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's maybe, uh, maybe, maybe that's it. Um, one last thing. Do you have a, um, when is your course going to be ready for, uh, to go? And, um, what's your website and how do people get a hold of you? Okay. The course should be ready to go this month. This is my target. Absolutely. My website is www.pro-gesang.de and that's it. I explained in German. The online course sollte wirklich sehr, sehr knapp Ende dieses Monats fertig werden. Er wird dann auf Udemy zu finden sein, in allererster Instanz, weiterführend natürlich auch auf meiner Homepage, ganz klar. Äh, die Homepage von mir haben wir tatsächlich noch nicht genannt. Äh, ihr findet mich unter www.pro-gesang.de Pro wie dafür oder auch wie professionell, 
minus, braucht man nicht reden, der Bindestrich und Gesang wie singen.de. www.progesang.de auf Facebook oder auch im Internet. Da wird der Kurs sicherlich zu finden sein, wie auch auf Udemy. I'm pretty sure uh, this course can also be found if uh, the guys reach you. Is it like that? If they ask you for the German course? Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. uh, so, so, you know, Sacha and I are partners on the course, so I, I certainly will help, help him sell it. You know, if people can if yeah. people go, go, go find it. Yeah, they, they contact me. Look, hey, you guys contact me at thevocaliststudio.com or Robert at thevocaliststudio.com if you have any questions about Sasha's course. And I, I will help you and make sure that you guys get information on that. Yep. Okay. Last right. advice. My last advice for yeah. the whole singing colleagues outside from a singing colleague outside but also my advice is utilize the techniques but always sing from the heart this is how it works so learn the techniques learn how it works do whatever you want but sing from the heart okay thank you we will leave it at that Thank you for your valuable time, Maestro. And um, thank you to everybody who joined us today. We will uh, po be posting this up uh, permanently on our Facebook groups and out on YouTube channels as well, so you can go back and listen to it later. And with that, um, we'll keep training vocal athletes. And we love you guys. And goodbye. Have a great time. Bye. Macht's gut, Leute. Wir sehen uns. Ciao.